Romero. Welcome to Walnut Hill Online. I'm Crystal Ellington, the online campus pastor, and I'm so glad that you've chosen to join us for worship today. You know, Walnut Hill Online is a place where we all can gather. No matter who you are or where you are on your journey with Jesus, we can lean in together as we sing and pray and give and learn from the Word of God. I truly believe that you belong here. And that being said, go ahead and connect into our community. Jump into a chat, say hey to a host. They'd love to greet you today. And if you are new, let me be the first to welcome you to Walnut Hill Online. God bless you. I'm so glad that you're here. If you'd visit walnuthillonline.org slash new, you'd be able to fill out a connect card that would give me the chance to meet you and to greet you, to send you a small welcome gift, learn how I can serve you, how I can pray for you, and how I can connect you into the life of the church. I would so love to meet you. You know, your kids are also part of our community here. If you visit walnuthillonline.org slash kids, you'll be taken to the place where there's age-appropriate Christ-centered lessons just for your kids so they can learn about Jesus and grow in faith just as you will during service today. And one more really important thing. We really believe in the power of prayer here at Walnut Hill Online, and we would love to pray for you today. If you visit walnuthillcc.online.church and click request prayer, you'll gain access to our eight, our prayer servants who would love to pray with and for whatever concerns you might have on your heart and your mind. Please let us pray for you today. It would be our pleasure to pray for you because this is what we do as family together here at Walnut Hill Online. Now is a perfect time for you to go ahead, clear out your space, create that distraction-free area so you can worship fully and hear from the Lord. And as you do that, let me encourage you with the reading from Psalm chapter 95. The Bible says, Come, let us sing to the Lord. Let us shout joyfully to the rock of our salvation. Let us come to him with thanksgiving. Let us sing psalms of praise to him, for the Lord is a great God, a great King above all gods. He holds in his hands the depths of the earth and the mightiest mountains. The sea belongs to him, for he made it. His hands form the dry land too. Come, let us worship and bow down. Let us kneel before the Lord, our maker, for he is our God. We are the people he watches over, the flock under his care. As the church, as the people of God, we are under the care of God and we should be grateful worshipers. So today, let us kneel down. Let us come before our God with joyful hearts filled with thanksgiving, ready to worship him fully. So let's prepare our hearts and minds for worship right now. Let's bow our head and close our eyes and pray together. Oh, dear Jesus, we thank you so much that you are our maker, that we are under your care and you care for us so well. I pray, Lord, that our worship would be full today, that we would be worshiping you in spirit and in truth because that is the kind of worship you desire and that is the kind of worship you deserve. So, Lord, I pray that you would fill us with joy of our salvation today, that we would be able to experience your peace and your presence and that we would truly be transformed by you today, Holy Spirit, because that is what you do when we encounter you. I pray this in Jesus' name, amen and amen. Well, welcome again to Walnut Hill Online. Let's worship together. Those walls that we call sin and shame They were like prisons that we couldn't escape But he came and he died and he rose Those walls are up now Remember those giants we call death and grave they were like mountains that stood in our way But He came and He went and He rose Those giants again now Alright, let's sing it out. This is our God. Here we go. This is our God. This is who He is. He loves us. This is our God. This is our God. This is what He does. He saves us. He bore the cross and beat the grave Let heaven and earth proclaim This is our God, King Jesus Remember that fear that took our breath away Faith so weak that we could barely pray But He heard every word now those altars in the wilderness Tell the story 
Tell the story of his faithfulness He never wants to be fair And he never will Let's sing it out, Jim This is our God This is who he is He loves us This is our God This is what he does He saves us He bore the cross beneath the grave Let heaven and earth proclaim This is our God, King Jesus Alright, who pulled us out? Who pulled us out of that pain? He did, He did Who paid for all of our sins? Nobody but Jesus Who pulled me out of that pain? He did, He did who paid for all of our sins? Nobody but Jesus. Who rescued me from that day? Yahweh, Yahweh, Yahweh. Who gets the glory and praise? Nobody but Jesus. Who rescued me from that day? Yahweh, Yahweh. Who gets the glory and praise? Nobody but Him. This is our God, this is who He is, He loves us. And this is our God, this is what He does, He saves us. He pulled the cross, He beat the grave, let heaven and earth proclaim. This is our God, King Jesus. He bore, He bore the cross, He beat the grave, let heaven and earth proclaim. This is our God, King Jesus. This is our God. Amen. Let's give him a shout of praise this morning. Amen. Welcome to Walnut Hill Community Church. My name is Chris. It's always great to be here uh, worshiping with you together. I want to welcome anybody who's here uh, first time, we welcome you. If you're here online, stand up, get off your couch, crank up those speakers, and then join us in, in, in praise and worship. Um, remember, singing is an extension of our faith and a, an expression of our faith, right? Amen? You guys agree with me with that? All right, so uh, this is the last Sunday of the month, okay? And um, we call it Family Sunday. And I love it because I get to have the high school and the youth uh, band join, join, join the team. So let's give it up for some of the high schoolers. We're gonna let you figure out who that is, and then we got the other guys mingling in with them, which is good. So um, these guys are great, and they showed up like professionals. So I want, at prayer warriors, prayer warriors, raise your hand right now for a second. I want you to promise me that you pray for these these youth kids this week, whenever they come up in your mind, pray for protection from the enemy and pray that God just reveals what he wants them, uh, them to do. Can you do that for me? All week. Okay, cool. We're gonna, uh, Zoe's going to take it over and sing a, a great song called All to Him. Savior is Jesus. 
is Jesus all to him all to him we one of the worship leaders here for our youth and children's ministry. And before we start this next song, I just wanna explain what it means to me and then I'll teach it to you because it's a little bit of a newer one. So the song is called World Outside Your Window. And if you notice, if you look at the words that we're gonna be singing, it's a song that really calls us out and it's like, we need to get off out of our seats and tell people about Jesus. We have this light inside of us and we can't hide that. We need to go out and tell other people. And we don't have forever, so we need to make the most of every opportunity that we get. So, let's learn the chorus. So the first part goes, It's not time to be silent. Don't you dare hide your light. There's a world outside your window, so don't let it pass you by. All right, so. Now what you're gonna do is you're gonna, we're gonna sing it all together, okay? It's not time to be silent. Don't you dare hide your light. There's a world outside your window, so don't let it pass you by. All right, good job, guys. All right, so second part of the chorus goes, lift your hands to the heavens, lift your voice to the sky. Praise the Lord of all creation. Let his name be lifted high. All right, I know you guys can sing it because even if you think you don't have a good voice, God doesn't care. He loves to hear you sing. All right, let's sing it out. Lift your, oh wait, let me find it, okay. <laughs> Lift your hands to the heavens. Lift your voice to the sky. Praise the Lord of all creation. Let his name be lifted high. All right, I think you guys are ready to sing the song. Stirs the spirit and it calls the heart to life. It's an anthem in the making. Can you feel it start to rise? Can you hear the generations getting louder over time? Every son and every daughter singing out into the night. All right. It's not time to be silent. Don't you dare hide your light. There's a world outside your window, so don't let it pass you by. Lift your hands to the heavens, lift your voice to the sky. Praise the Lord of all creation, let his name be lifted high. Sing it. Yeah. 
Then came the morning that sealed the promise. Your buried body began to breathe out of the silence. The roaring lion declared the grave has no claim on me. Can we sing that again? the kids in the room today. Now at this time, grades kindergarten through sixth grade can head out those doors and go to their classroom. And for whoever else is here, you can turn and greet your neighbor. Good morning, church. Good morning on this rainy, rainy day here in Connecticut, right? You know, if you're online, we pray a blessing over you. Maybe you're in sunny Florida. Maybe you're in the warm weather in the Midwest. Maybe you're joining us from Turkey or even Iran. Isn't it wonderful to gather today as the Lord's church? Amen. It is. It is. Very good. You know, I just want to um, highlight something that we shared with you last week. If you're here at the Bethel campus, you've noticed a QR code appear on your kind of hand rest there, almost all the seats here in the church. We're excited about this because this is an easy access for you to get information on the most pressing things happening here at the church. And so we want to encourage you every week to check it out. This, this week, you're going to see something about a highlighted event coming up. You can uh, give there. You can find out about serving opportunities. You can read our news bits email. We want to make sure that you guys know what's happening. And today, if you look at the first item on the list, it talks about our Faithful Finance Seminar, which is coming this Saturday. And uh, it's important that you sign up for it, even sign up today. We're so excited about this. Chuck and Ann Bentley from Crown Financial Ministries are coming. They'll be here on Saturday to speak. Chuck will be speaking next Sunday here during our service as well. And we're so excited because these are international leaders in the area of finance and leadership. They have so much wisdom when it comes to the area of finance. You're going to be blessed. And so they're going to be speaking at the seminar this Saturday. But we also have some really amazing breakouts happening. Everything from how do you budget, how do you get out of debt, how do you save for retirement, how do you save for college, something that I'm interested in, um, everything about special needs, and even what are the benefits available in Connecticut, and how do you set up a trust. And so we tell you about these things because we don't want you to say the following week, I missed it, I didn't know about it. Well, you know about it, so please sign up for that. And, uh, you know, while we're talking about giving, I just want to thank you for your faithful giving here uh, to the church, which enables God's work to take place. 
we know that it's each and every one of us contributing that really fuels the ministry here at Walnut Hill. And so we want to say thank you to you for that. If you would, just join me in prayer as we dedicate today's offering to the Lord. Father, we're so grateful that you provide for us, Lord. And we're so grateful, Lord, that you invite us in and you instruct us and command us to give back to you. And and so, Lord, we do that today with joyful hearts, with worshipful spirits. We want to say thank you, Lord, for providing for us. We trust you. And, Lord, even in this moment, we give to you all the bills and dreams that maybe are in our lives right now that we could always use more money for. And we ask for your blessing, Lord, to be able to take care of those things. Uh, But we also ask for that blessing so that we can give generously. And so, Lord, today, whether we're giving online or you're here in boxes or mailing our checks in, we take this moment just to give to you in our hearts and our spirit and just say, Lord, we worship you. Would you use this offering to do wonders for your name and for your glory? And all God's people said, amen, amen. Amen. Today we talk about faithfully stewarding our God-given gifts and strengths. God has given each of us things in our lives that we can use for the sake of his kingdom. And part of our abundant life is to learn how to faithfully steward those things. Connecting with God in the ways that he has made us, the way he's designed us, in the gifts that he's given us, using those gifts and living them out in a way that brings him great glory. For us, that brings joy, excitement, passion when we get to step into those places where we know our gifts are being being used in a special way. If you can think back to a time where you just, you just knew it wasn't you, but it was God at work, very likely that's a place when you were experiencing the Lord using some of how he has really gifted you. We, ex- we get to experience that abundance when we step into those places, but we also, we bless the world and the, our community, both our church family and those outside of it who are looking at us and wondering, who are these Christians, what are they all about? Well, I'm going to try something right now, and I want to see if you can help me. I worked on this all week. This is the abundant life in Farsi. You ready? Listen carefully. I had to listen many, many times. Zendegia befarovoni. Zendegia befarovoni. You want to try it? Okay, let's try the first part. Zendegia befarovoni. Some of you will find that easier than others. I think your native tongue may help you. For me, it didn't help me at all. But that's the abundant life in Farsi. And in, uh, that's the language, the Persian language that those in Iran speak. And again, this, this concept of every culture wanting to experience the abundant life. Now, just a verse before, the, or two verses before the ones we just read, it says this. Most important of all, continue to, to show deep love for each other. For love covers a multitude of sins. This is the, 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 the prequel to the verses we just read. And I think it's a very, very important place to start because when we look at the abundant life, we, when we look at our, our gifts and talents unleashed, it's, it's important to see that it's with love that we're meant to serve. We're supposed to love to serve. We love in order to really serve in a way that's gonna be effective. So what is the deep love that's being talked about here? Show deep love for each other. For love covers a multitude of sins. What is this deep love that's being talked about? Now deep in this context could mean this const, like a constant love, ongoing, continuous love. So if it's a continuous love, ongoing, that doesn't, that doesn't seem to fail, we know that that can't just be a mere feeling, correct? Because we know our feelings come and go. They, they, our feelings are often a roller coaster. So we're not talking about that kind of love, the love that kind of flits in in a moment and could equally go away in a second. No, that's not what we're talking about here. The word that's used is this word agape, which you maybe learned about when you were even a child, agape love. And agape love is a pure, willful, sacrificial love that intentionally desires the best for others. Now that sounds like effort, doesn't it? It does to me. I mean, anytime you put willful in a definition, you know that it requires effort. And sacrifice doesn't come easy. That means that you're putting aside something that you would want to do or be for someone else. This is the kind of love that's being talked about. And, and the concept here is that it's being stretched and extended. 
The love of, the, of believers is stretching in depth and endurance. You see more of this spoken about Ephesians chapter 3, verses 17 and 19, which ends by saying, love that surpasses all knowledge. It's, it's something inspired by God, empowered by the Holy Spirit. I know for a fact that in my life there's been times I've been hard to love. Do you know that about yourself? Can you think of times you've been hard to love? Hopefully it wasn't just this morning. But we, ha- we, we know at times we are very hard to love. We need in our lives to experience this agape love, this love that surpasses understanding, this love that continues even when we're hard to love. And it starts, of course, in our Lord, doesn't it? Because John 1, 1 John 4.19 says, we love because he first loved us. And that whole passage in 1 John talks about how We don't deserve love. In fact, we are the enemies of God. And even while we were enemies, before we ever turned to him, he loved us. And he was ready and willing to do what he did, what Jesus did on the cross for us, even before we ever thought to turn our eyes to him and to to even consider to love him. This is the kind of love that's being talked about. It's this love that's filled with the Lord and his spirit's presence that stretched through exercise, through the use of that love. And if it fails at the first difficult moment, then it's not even worthy of the name agape. Because 1 Corinthians 13, 8 says, love never fails. It might waver sometimes in us as humans, but it never fails when we take that sacrificial love approach. We make the choice, the decision to love. And, it's, and it flows forth from the fact that our God loved us first. Verse 8 reminds us that there's going to be misunderstandings and frustrations even amongst strong believers. But we, but we're, we have to still lead with love. I know that when I step into those moments where I'm having a hard time loving someone, whoever it may be, I have to ask myself, where is the behavior coming from that this person is displaying that I'm struggling with? How can I assume the best in the situation? How can I overlook what can be overlooked and only address that what, what truly needs to be addressed? And, and for me, the litmus test is, can I overlook this and continue to be in strong relationship with this person? Or is it, is it so challenging that I know that I need to have an, in, an interaction and work on that problem because I want to continue to stay, be able to stay in that relationship. If I can see some, someone from across the fellowship area and, want to, and not want to avoid them and want to go to them, probably that small thing could be overlooked. But if I know I'm struggling with that, then a step needs to be taken. We see the example of this in Peter's words to Jesus in Matthew 18, 21 to 22 when he's trying to be an example to those around him and to Jesus, that he is a man who forgives. Here's what he says. Peter came to Jesus and asked, Lord, how often should I forgive someone who sins against me? Seven times? Which would have been a lot. More than what was required by the law. So he thought he was like, he was coming in to Jesus saying, hey, look at me, I'm ready to forgive even more than the law requires. But Jesus says, no, not seven times but 70 times seven. The point being, not when you get to the end of that number, you're done, but it's an ongoing process. That's what love is. It's the willingness to continue to forgive and to love and to take steps. A body of believers, a Christian church, a small group even, a family that loves the Lord, there's still messiness in it, isn't there? There's still challenges even though We're trying to fix our eyes on Jesus. We're trying to live the way he wants us to do. It's messy, yes, but it's it's also powerful because our love will affect not only those within our church family, but it will affect those who look on and see how we love one another. The, the, The ultimate example to me is in John 13. So he got up from the table, took off his robe, wrapped a towel around his waist and poured water into a basin. Then he began to wash the disciples' feet, drying them with the towel he had around him. After washing their feet, he put on his robe again and sat down and asked, do you understand what I'm doing? You call me teacher and Lord, and you are right, because that's what I am. 
And since I, your Lord and teacher, have washed your feet, you ought to watch each other wash each other's feet. And he says later on, I've given you an example to follow. Do as I have done to you. What an amazing moment that I'm sure the disciples looked back on over and over and over again when they finally completely understood and realized that it was actually the God of the universe in human form who was washing their feet. What love to be displayed. What a memory, even a physical, they can remember that physical touch of Jesus. And it's so important for us to think of that same kind of interaction that we've had with the Lord when the more difficult times come to love. We have to serve from this place of love. It's hard for it to be genuine service if it's not from that place. It can't merely be transactional. If I do this for you, you do this for me. But when it's truly led by by love, there's transformation because the Holy Spirit enables us to serve far beyond what we could do on our own. So we start in that point, that moment of loving to serve. But I want to just remind you, in case you didn't know today, that God is a God who gives good gifts. He gives good gifts. And I want to ask you today, have you identified the gifts that he has given you? Because every gift in the spirit in each of us was creatively created in us, but then it's touched by the spirit when we surrender to him, and it's empowered in an entirely new and more powerful way. As we are recreated in Christ, the Spirit of Christ does something mighty to our gifts, our strengths, and our abilities. He empowers them in a way that we couldn't couldn't see the things happen that we could see when the Lord comes and does this in our lives. So I want to ask you, have you embraced those gifts that he's given you? Because he's given you good gifts. There's no doubt in my mind, because scripture is so clear about it, and I get a chance to meet so many of you, that you are gifted in some way, and some of you in many ways. So have you ever taken the time to discover those gifts? I, I want to give you some real practical steps that you could take today. Over the years, I've had the opportunity to sit with many people at Walnut Hill and, and walk through and help them discover their gifts. And I found a few tools that I think are excellent and in most cases very cheap or free. So I'll give you the free one first. It's going to come up on the screen. It's called Shape. It's something that we've used for many, many years. And there is a great test you can take online that's free. It's even called freeshapetest.com, just in case you were wondering if it was actually going to cost you anything. And it gives you such a great example of these different components. Your spiritual gifts, which is really wonderful to learn about. You know, what are the heart, um, what are the things that get your heart really engaged? It will help you to discover some of those things. What are the abilities that you've been given? Those are a little bit different than spiritual gifts, but when you combine abilities and giftedness, there's power in that. Um, what, is your, what is your personality type? It uses the DISC personality type um, breakdown, which is great. gives you some really good information about how, you know, how has God made me personality-wise. And then it helps you to examine some of the experiences that you've had where you have noticed that God's been at work. What a great tool. And I tell you, if you go through this and you want someone to walk it through with you, um, one of the pastors here would love to do that with you. I can tell you that right now because it's such a privilege and a joy to do that kind of thing. The next thing that I've used over the years is this this thing called Uniquely You. Uh, I believe that it was actually originally put together by a professor at Gordon Gordon College in in Massachusetts. It's, It's developed over the years. There is a small cost involved. But you're going to, again, discover your personality. It's, it, it's coming from a faith-based perspective. So you're going to get a real dovetailing of spiritual gifts with abilities. And I, it, it, it opens up I, you know, concepts for you and helps you to understand who God has uniquely made you. Another great tool. Then the final tool that I use a lot is Gallup Strengths. Now, if you go to Google or any search engine and you write Gallup Strengths Top 5, it will show you, I didn't want to put the website up here because it was so long and, and, and hard to understand, but if you put that in your search engine, it will give you the direct link to taking this little test. This one does take, cost $25, but it's money well spent, and it will show you who you are from, from the per- perspective of your, of your strengths. Now, it's not designed from a Christian perspective, but what I love about it is that it really, really dovetails well. With, your, with the spiritual gifts that we find in Scripture very, very well. Adam and I both have used this tool extensively on, with our staff and also with lots of you in this room. 
And I've found it to be incredibly helpful to understand how God has wired you, what strengths he has given you. And it comes from this perspective that you could spend a lifetime trying to take your weaknesses and sort of like moving them up a little bit. And you'd find yourself very frustrated doing that. Or you could embrace the body of Christ imagery and know that you're very strong at some things and probably very weak at other things. Leave those weaknesses, focus on your strengths, really strive into those and let the, those who have strengths in those other areas that you don't fill in the gaps. That's what the body of Christ is all about. We need each other. There's certain things that I'm, I'm no good at. I need to encourage others to take step into those areas of giftedness they have and fill, up, fill in those gaps. Same thing for you. Find out how God has designed you. These tools can be so incredibly helpful as you consider how do I see my gifts unleashed for the sake of the kingdom. You'll also be blessed yourself as you, you learn these things. Now, have you embraced your gifts, though? If, you've, if, you've, if you know what they are, if you've taken the time to discover what they are, have you embraced them? Do you celebrate how God has gifted you? I run into so many people who struggle to celebrate how God has made them. In fact, they wish they were someone else. And I want to tell you, that's the fastest way to bury your giftedness and miss out on what God would want to do with who he has made you. That fear of failure can come into play. Even that miserly mentality where you say, I have to hold fast. If I give it away, I'm going to be empty. Now, we talk, we've talked about God's economy the last few weeks in different ways. And I want to tell you, the beauty of, one of the beauties of our faith is that when we give it away, somehow the Lord replaces it and more. I don't know how to explain that to you except for the fact that I've experienced it and a lot of you have too. But when we are miserly with our gifts, we hold them tight because we're afraid that if we give them away, we're going to lose them and they're going to be gone or we're going to be exhausted and we're not going to be filled up. Man, we miss out and I feel like it's one of the enemy's tactics is to tell us, just hold tight, hold fast. And we never get the chance to really see what God would do with his desire to empower those gifts and have great impact through them. And then we talked a lot about time the last few weeks, didn't we? But we need bandwidth, don't we, to be able to invest our gifts into others, into other things. We need some bandwidth. We have to find that bandwidth where we can give time away and have impact. Neglecting our gifts and wishing that we had other gifts is another way that I've seen people really miss out. We look at others, and we can do that compare game, which gets us nowhere, and we say, oh, if I only had that person's gifts, I wish I could do what they're doing. And what that does so often is take our eyes off of how God has made us and, and keep us from remembering what a blessing it is to be gifted in the ways that we are gifted by the Lord. And then some of us, some of you, some of us are functioning outside of our gift mix because we think that success perhaps equals these things that I do. How do you figure out if you're functioning outside of your gift mix? Number one, you're probably exhausted at the end of every day. You're wondering why. Or you're, the other way you can find out is it's not just about you know, introspection, but asking others that you trust to actually speak into you. Where do they see um, ignition happen in your life as you, as you serve the Lord? He wants to give, give good gifts. He gives good gifts. And his gifts are useful gifts. They are meant to be used. They're not just for you, not just for your edification. He, gave, he gives his gifts for purpose. And that purpose so often is to impact others. Christianity, as we sung this morning, is not a faith meant to be kept quiet. And our gifts aren't meant to be kept to ourselves. God gives, our, gives us gifts so that we can serve others, that we can have an impact even as we look at passages that tell us to eagerly desire gifts, we don't eagerly desire gifts just so we can store up gifts in our lives. We eagerly desire gifts so that we can have an impact, so that we can use them. Yes, more of the gifting of God in my life. I pray this. I want more. In fact, there's, certain, there's gifts that I haven't experienced. I'd like to experience. I don't think the Lord has a problem with me asking, Lord, would you give me those gifts? I'd like to experience those. I think he does care about the attitude of my heart, though. Why am I asking? Is it for me? Is it for me to feel better about myself? Is it for me to 
uh, be able to be on stage and get more pats on the back and plaudits, or is it because I want to be more effective for the sake of his kingdom? I believe that's the attitude that he would want us to have. Have you invited the Lord in to empower your gifts so that you can move beyond your own strength, beyond your own determination, beyond your own natural ability? Are you learning to be naturally supernatural? which is a phrase that we've stolen from a good friend of, our, friend of ours, John Nell. Are we learning how to be naturally supernatural? Just seeing God empowering those things. Are we maximizing our gifts? What are you grow, doing to grow in your areas of giftedness? What steps are you taking? What environments, what soil are you planting yourself in that's bringing growth and effectiveness in your life? You know, I wanted to give a, an example through a testimony, and I want to invite my friend Haley Hills to come up, where she's going to share a little bit about her story and how she has discovered her giftedness as she's been serving here at Walnut Hill and elsewhere. Haley, good to have you with us. Thank you. It's good to be here. Now, some of you see Haley around in a few different settings. One, if you're here on a Sunday morning, she's pretty much always here doing something, yes? Right. <laughs> uh, she, she carries a podium, but men, she does much more than that, much yes. more than that. She's our service coordinator, coordinator, meaning that she really oversees all the details of what's going on on Sunday mornings, but also she is coordinating our food pantry as of about a year now, right, Haley? Yeah, in February. That's right. So I wanted to just ask you to, to get everyone up to speed to tell us a little bit about what the journey has been for you to kind of arrive at today, especially in regards to how you've seen God grow you in your areas of giftedness. Yeah, absolutely. Um, so after grad graduating college a couple of years ago, Walnut Hill actually invited me to take part in a one-year residency, which is basically a program for young ministry leaders to come grow, discover, develop their gifts in ministry. And during that one year, it turned out to be a journey of discovery for me. Uh, my former supervisor at the time and I kind of jokingly would tell each other that I needed to learn through the nose. And what I mean by that <laughs> is I would, I did something in women's ministry. I would take place in young adults ministry. I would help out with children's ministry. And every one of those areas was fantastic. I did amazing things, grew and developed great relationships. But it wasn't where I felt like my gifting and my calling was, was mixing and matching. Mm -hmm. So it came to the end of the first year. I was invited to do a second year. And about halfway through that second year, um, a job role opened up. So Pastor John Dissinger was um, kind of stepping in interim for a season for the food pantry coordinator role. And then he ended up retiring. And I remember Craig Murray coming to me and saying, look, we have this job role for you. Would you be willing to take it? And I gotta be honest, I was terrified. <laughs> a 23 year old, um, now overseeing a team, organization, um, a huge volunteer base, that was terrifying to me. Um, but I knew the Lord was calling me into that and the Lord wanted to develop me more in that space. So it's been quite a journey. Well, it's been exciting to watch it happen, Haley. And we, we, uh, we entrusted you with that because we had seen how God was already using you. And it wasn't just your organizational ability, which was very clear from day one, but it was how you were growing and wanting to lead leaders. Yeah. And it's been exciting to see how that's grown. Talk to me a little bit, because you've had a few other really exciting experiences over the last year, particularly, yeah. where you've gotten to be stretched and grown. Uh, you know, we, I talked earlier about how our gifts are part of the experience is, is, is learning on the job, really. You know, it, it's Absolutely. sometimes we think, oh, the Lord will tell me what to do I'll, and I'll jump into this area of service. It's all going to make sense. But sometimes the best way to discover is by actually doing it. And you already yes. talked about that. You tried <laughs> lots of things yep. and then you land finally, you know, after a year or so, you landed in a place where it was just a really good, clear fit. So tell us about yep. some of those other things that you've done that have done some of that kind of work in your life. Yeah, definitely. Uh, so one of the... The first ones that come to mind was this past November, I had the absolute privilege of going to Cambodia to serve with a small team from Walnut Hill and to partner with our, fountain, with our Church in Action partner, Fountain of Hope. And yes. you can actually see the picture there. Where we were invited to lead a cell church leadership training, which is basically the people who are running the ministry day to day. Um, and that specific day, 
the director of care, Lucy Houghton, and I had the privilege of leading uh, just some time of prayer. And we both really felt led to do an altar call. Now, what we didn't expect was that every single person in that room would come forward. <laughs> um, and what's tricky about it is there's a huge language barrier. Um, their, word, their language is Khmer, and it's nowhere near English, mm -hmm. nowhere near. Um, but there were only a few translators in the room. So what we decided last minute was women are going to pray for women, men are going to pray for men, and we're just going to trust the Holy Spirit to speak. Um, so I remember starting to go down the line, praying one for one, and the Lord really used that moment to build a gift of prophecy. I remember praying for a young adult woman who, uh, I had this vision of like a bouquet of roses, and I really felt like the Lord was just telling her about her beauty in the Lord and the beauty that the Lord has given her in her, in her identity. And she started crying, and I, I remember looking down in her journal, there was a bouquet of flowers. And I, at that point, I was like, all right, translator, come on over. <laughs> Can we we got to talk about this. Um, and I just asked her, hey, what, what made you draw those roses? Why are you crying? And she let me know that her mother passed away recently, and she draws roses when she thinks about her. So language barrier, I had no idea, and yet the Lord wanted to meet her in that moment. The Lord is really good in those Amen. moments. Exciting. Very good. Glory to God. <laughs> Um, and, and, and just just to be clear, you were not in your comfort zone. Oh, no, no. <laughs> <Not at all. laughs> you stepped way outside of your comfort zone. Yeah. Although they treated you well. It looks like they gave you a cake That's, there, Haley. So yeah. what's that all about? That was actually my birthday. Um, <laughs> I did not expect to be teaching and doing all, all of this work on my birthday, and yet they were such, such an amazing group of people. It was such a blessing to be with them. That's great. So we'll talk a little bit now about what you're currently doing. And this was an ex a, a, a kind of a once-in-a-lifetime experience going to Cambodia, perhaps. And, but you have a, you're doing something daily now, almost daily, with a team. Yeah, so my role in Food Pantry Coordinator, um, I, obviously the biggest gift I get to exercise is leadership. And that is literally a daily walk. It's learning and growing every single day with my team. I have a part-time staff. And then I also have lead volunteers that I oversee, plus volunteers under them, and then another huge volunteer base, plus operations on top of that. There's a lot that goes on. Um, but through that, the Lord has really developed how, how to build relationship, how to lead well, how to meet people where they're at. Um, and just to be able to be the hands and feet of Jesus. I, I particularly love to serve. That's where I feel like the Lord has called me. So to be the hands and feet of Jesus, literally giving food to people, but also meeting people where my team are, my staff are, my volunteers are, that's huge to me. So the Lord has been developing me in, in all those ways. That's great. So this is a picture of your your core team here, and right. uh, these guys, this is an all-star team, isn't it? Oh my gosh, they're amazing. Could not do what we do without them. We're currently serving around 1,550 families every month. Without these guys, that wouldn't happen. It's amazing. Yeah. Awesome, Haley, thank you. One last question, how, how are you, what are you doing in your life on a you know, monthly, yearly basis, would you say, where, you, where you're trying to maximize your gifts, where you're trying to see those gifts grow? What, what, what are you doing? Just so you give, give an example to these guys about, you know, what are the, what's, what's something tangible that you do? <laughs> That's a great question. Um, did I tell you I was going to ask you that question? <laughs> I hope I did. You did, you did. <laughs> <laughs> so, honestly, I would say it's absolutely a work in progress. Uh, the fact that I'm here on this stage, to be quite honest with you all, is, is the work of the Lord, and it's actually saying yes. Um, the Lord provides the people. The Lord provides the environment. All I had to do was say yes to come up here and say yes to the opportunity Craig provided. But I will say that it's in community. My community, trusted mentors and friends, they were the ones to point out gifts of teaching and communication that I didn't see and probably didn't want to see, to be quite honest with you. <laughs> um, and then it was also the calling of the Lord. I genuinely felt the Lord calling me to this space. So having those two um, come together really pushed me and invited me to come up. Um, but it is a work in progress, right? Like. Coming up here is a one-time deal. There's going to be other opportunities that I'm going to continue to say yes to because I know the Lord is good. Amen. So my invitation to you is to say yes to him. He will meet you there. He is very faithful in that. And he will come every single time when you say yes. Amen. Thank you, Haley. I'm going to pray for you. Okay. 
This is one of our um, incredible young leaders at Walnut Hill. Will you pray with me for her? Uh, God, thank you so much for Haley Hills. Thank you, Lord, that you have, you called her before she ever knew that you had called her. And Lord, that you have given her the, the heart to respond over and over again. Yes, initially, but also to saying yes to the things that you have called her to do and to be. And I pray you'd continue that, that open-heartedness to you all the days of her life, that she might see much done in and through her, that she would affect not just thousands, but hundreds of thousands for the sake of your kingdom, God. And I pray, God, that you would bless her through it, that she would always know your hand of blessing and, the, and that great excitement of being used by you for the sake of your kingdom. In Jesus' name, amen. amen. Thanks, Haley. I'm gonna invite the worship team to come up as I just close with a, one or two more things. Um, what, you see, what you see in Haley, what I wanted you to see is that you, you've got kind of a two-fold concept going on here. This idea of stewardship being enacted. She's accountable to the master, to, to God, but she's also been given by God the role of administrator of the master's affairs. And she's exercising those those, uh, that, that gift that God has given her, which is an authority that the Lord has given. And the same is true of us. When the Lord takes gifts, what he wants to do with them is turn them into ministries. He wants to give you authority to have impact. I truly believe that. You may feel like your sphere of influence is very small, and at times it might be, but it shouldn't mean that you don't step into those things with joy and passion and knowing that the Spirit is, is right there with you. you. You may feel like your sphere is quite large right now. We're, we're, we're to use those gifts with, with passion and joy and see what he wants to do in and through us. Because as we use our gifts, God gets the glory. As you allow the Lord to work, as you do what you can for him, when it's the love of the Lord that is inspiring you to step out in faith, when it's that that's motiv motivating you, his love, he will ultimately receive the glory for what he has done in and through you. Haley doesn't care about receiving the glory today. That's the beauty of her testimony. God gets the glory. God gets the glory. And others get to see what it looks like to turn our attention to him. What's the secret to the apostles' success in the book of Acts that we've been reading all year long? It's not their own skills. You can see their skills before the Spirit came upon them. You can see them, but then you can see the dramatic difference when the Spirit falls upon them, right? Their, their, their gifts empowered by the Spirit. I believe Peter could speak before the Spirit fell upon him, but the things that came out of his mouth were not the same after the Holy Spirit came and touched him and changed him and transformed him. And it's true for us too. That's the secret of our success. As we become naturally supernatural, as we invite the Holy Spirit into who we are, what we are, get away from that miserly sense, but say, I give it away knowing you're gonna fill me up again, over and over again. That's when God gets the glory. And your success will point to Jesus, which is ultimately what we want to see. That is living the abundant life. When we are miraculously receiving so much, even as we give more and more away. Barnabas' example is a beautiful one. What do they call him? The son of encouragement. Did you know his name is not Barnabas? Does anyone know what it was? Joseph. It was Joseph. But we don't ever even think of him as Joseph, do we? Because in Acts, over and over it, gets, it says Paul and Barnabas, or Barnabas, or then Paul and Barnabas again, or pa Barnabas and Paul doing things together for the sake of the kingdom. And what was his gift of encouragement? Where do we see it? Well, we see it with Paul, don't we? He goes after Paul. He goes and finds him. Paul is isolated by himself, still doing ministry, but it's Barnabas, I believe, who helps him to unlock his potential and become the Paul that we see in Scripture. 
Half of Paul's ministry, Barnabas was by his side, encouraging him, helping him, giving him entree into places that he might not have otherwise had. That is a gift empowered by the Spirit. It's not because Barnabas was so great. It's because God had given him something and he said, God, come use it for the sake of what you want to do. It's not mine. I'm just a steward of it. You've given it to me to be used by you. He does it again with Mark. Poor Mark, who's been cast away. Barnabas brings him under his wing, reestablishes him back into ministry, nurtures him along the path, and then releases him. This is a gift employed by the Spirit. This is when the Lord receives the glory and effective ministry happens, when we learn how to receive in order to give away. So what are, you, what are your gifts? Do you know what they are? What will you do to discover them? Once you have discovered those gifts, what will you do with them? Will you steward them well? Will you use them out of love for others to bless, to impact, to encourage, to empower? Will you use them to glorify God? Will you unleash and allow the Lord to unleash your God-given gifts? Because this is, this is a part of that Zendigia Befarovani, the abundant life. The abundant life is for all of us who have, have surrendered their lives to Jesus. Friends, don't wait to step in and allow God to truly use you. Don't wait to take a step to understand what your gifts are. Don't wait to have the, that excitement of knowing when you're being empowered by the Spirit and, having, and seeing effective ministry happen. It's so exciting and it's such an important part of the abundant life. I'm gonna pray for you as we stand and as we finish our time in worship. Lord God, I, I thank you so much for the examples that we've heard from scripture, from a live testimony, somebody who knows she's on a journey but is experiencing some of these things that we're talking about. And I believe wholeheartedly that you want to do these same types of things in each of us. You want to empower us to be used by you because it's gonna have an impact, not just on us, but on all those that we come in contact with. Lord, we want to step into those places where we know that we couldn't otherwise succeed apart from you, Lord. I pray that we'd be a church that would take those types of risks individually and as a church family. And we would see how you come and move mightily as we are willing to say, Lord, use us, use us. In Jesus' name, amen. A great song to sing about gratitude. Let's give God, God our gratitude as we sing the song called Gratitude. Sing, all my words fall short. All my words fall short. I've got nothing new. How could I express all my gratitude? I could sing these songs As I often do Every song will stand But you never do So I throw up my hands And praise you again and again Cause all that I have is in fit for a king except for a heart singing hallelujah and hallelujah I've got one response i got just one move with my arms stretched wide 
I will worship you So I throw up my hands Praise you again and again Cause all that I have is in my soul so come on my soul don't you get shy on me lift up your soul cause you got a lion inside those lies get up and praise the Lord sing it out church here we go sing it out so come on my soul don't you get shy on me lift up your soul cause you got a lion inside those lungs get up and praise the Lord so come on my soul and don't you get shy on me lift up your songs cause you got a lion inside those lungs get up and praise the Lord so I throw Sing that one last chorus one more time. Just the voices. Here we go. So I throw up my hands and praise you again and again. Because all that I have is a hallelujah. And hallelujah. And I know it's not much. Nothing else fit for a king Except for a heart singing Hallelujah Hey, thanks so much for joining us for worship today. I don't know about you, but I want to be naturally supernatural. I want to allow the Lord to empower me in the gifts that he's given so that I can do things beyond the strength that I have, beyond my natural ability, beyond anything I could do by myself. I don't know about you, but I know that the Lord has really been speaking to me with Pastor about what Pastor Craig said today. And I really hope that he was speaking to you too, because I know that the Lord has planted seeds in our hearts and our minds today for us to take away from our service today. Your first 20 is the best time for you to encounter honor the Lord and to ask him questions about what you heard him saying to you, what you heard Pastor Craig plant in your heart and your mind today. You know that first 20 is that best first 20 minutes of your day you spend in prayer, you spend in reading your word, you spend in listening for the Lord in worship. And I know that the Lord will reveal to you exactly how he wants you to use the gifts he's given you, maybe even help you to discover or rediscover gifts that he's given you. And then you can walk in obedience as he empowers you by the power of his spirit. I really do pray that you would really take that first 20 very seriously this week. You know, we would love to pray for you today. If you visit walnuthillcc.online.church and click request prayer, you'll gain access to a prayer servant who would just really love to pray for whatever is on your heart and mind, really give you that peace that the Lord will give to you through them. They would just love to really help you in prayer today. So please don't log out. Don't, get that, don't go out that back door without speaking to us and allowing us to pray for you because this is what we do here at Walnut Hill Online as family. 
You know, one more thing. If you are new today, I would so love to meet you. Go ahead and visit walnuthillonline.org slash new and fill out that connect card so that I have the opportunity to meet you, to greet you, to serve you, to pray for you and connect you into the life of the church. It really would be my pleasure to get to know you on the other side of the screen. So now, as you go into your week, let me bless you. Why? Because I love you so very much. I pray that this week that you would discover and rediscover the gifts that God has given you. And then that you would allow him to empower you so you can be naturally supernatural and you can use your gifts for his glory. I pray this in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Well, God bless you. I love you so much. I'll see you real soon.